Yo, Yo check, check it. it. Welcome back to another I episode. Totally <laughs> Johnny <laughs> wanted to do a practice oh, run for a podcast. Like, what the fuck, dude? I told you that. I okay. don't even. <laughs> Mind you, this is my first. You got to have to speak louder, man. Mind you, this is my first <laughs> podcast interview <laughs> of all. All right. Is a little but nervous. It should be, just pretend you're doing like you know you do a lot of selfie camera stuff on the IG stuff. That's I know. different. I you know. But it's not. Okay. <laughs> it's the same shit. Dude. It's the same thing. Okay. And you were, and you were talking about we were just talking about this like a couple of days ago. You were like, we always talk, but then, you know, it's just we're it's, just talking regular conversation and we're just recording it. It's different. It's like... And it'll be on the internet forever. So if you say something forever. embarrassing... Oh, great. Um, don't incriminate yourself. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, don't... Inc- yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah. Because we about to go deep, right? Yeah, you got to have to okay, like... So I'm going to make sure... Fifth or something. Go to the details. <laughs> what are we talking about? My God. What was the topic? Oh, oh wow. Uh, so... God, we're four... What episode are we on? You forgot to say welcome to your... We're on the 51st episode now, right? No, this is 52nd. We did one yesterday. Oh, yesterday? I thought yesterday was the 50th. No, that was 51st. Oh, God. Yeah. So was it uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, or I thought it was Monday? It's just Monday. It's whenever it's we want. Okay. Oh, yeah. you mean when we release? Yeah. yeah. The podcast, uh, podcast comes out on Mondays. Um, but then we just record it whenever. Um, whenever we got to time. Mondays. Don't forget. Podcast. Yeah, it's always on. <laughs> Sorry, guys. This is uh, this is gonna be a really interesting one because Felicia and Johnny are pretty tired. I'm feeling pretty tired good. Tired as fuck. Yeah. Um, There's a lot of stuff before I got here, so yeah. They're a little hangry. Um, Me too. So yeah, it's gonna be. And I got a headache. It's gonna be. It's gonna get real in here. Pissed right. off. Because <laughs> uh, we tried to open a beer, but we couldn't open a beer. So we couldn't uh, open a beer. How do I got beers we, that require a bottle opener with no bottle opener? We have one here, but it's somewhere. Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways. You know, I would help you, but like, I don't drink, so. Yeah. I was going to use the table, however. I don't want to ruin anything. But yeah, let's just, uh, let's just get on with it. All um, right. So... When we bring in a new guest, we normally ask them two questions, Johnny. Actually, we got to introduce Johnny. We haven't introduced Johnny yeah. yet. <laughs> Who are you, Johnny? Who are you, Johnny? Tell us a Johnny boy. Bit about yourself. Bro, you, mind you, we didn't practice on this. I have no we idea. We don't what the practice in a podcast. What table the of contents, talking? what have you. What this you? is totally freestyle right now. All right. Yeah, of course. This is how we do it, You're man. You're not going to bring your notes. Um, all right. So my name's Johnny. Um, let's see here. And just like my friends here next to me, I'm kind of in the same realm as in terms of, you know, I got my own thing going on with the own clothing line. Yeah. Um, What's it called? Main Clothing. Main M- Clothing. Yeah. M-E-N as in Nancy, G as in green. Yeah, I had to just say it because <laughs> they all sound the same. So. Oh. <laughs> main Clothing. Go check us out. Yeah. At main Clothing. <laughs> all social or social, <laughs> social media <laughs> platforms. He's already plugging in. Let's go. Oh, Shameless man. plug. Hey, I got to take advantage of this. <laughs> you might as well. So, yeah, welcome to our podcast, bro. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. I've known Johnny for probably five years now. You know, I'm more or less. Yeah. yeah, more Johnny's or less. Johnny's known my husband for like ever. Since yeah. They go way back. Yeah. Like little kids. His name is Butter, not Anthony. His name is <laughs> Anthony. But he calls him Butter. <laughs> uh, he's going to hate that But let's just say Because <laughs> if anybody hey, hears it They're going to call him Butter My boy smooth like it You know what I mean So just call him Butter <laughs> But only he can call him That's what he told me He's like Only Johnny and Francis Can call me that Or something like that <laughs> And I was like Okay Sorry Facts um, <laughs> But yeah So we've, I've known Johnny For A few years um, Yeah When we first met I think you asked me to do a, a video, like a promo video for your clothing line. That's right. I mean, we met. We probably met before that. Well, I've seen you before, but like, never really talked. Yeah, said hello and everything, but you know. Yeah, it's crazy because like after that, after we made those videos, like, 
we never really kept in touch, you know? I mean, like, obviously, like, we see each other once in a while, but then mm -hmm. we don't, we never really talk and hang out until recently. Which was five years ago. Oh, we know. No. <laughs> three years ago? <laughs> we started hanging out, like, what, three years ago, right? Four years? Three, four years? No, we didn't really hang out. We oh, just damn. work. They, they hang out now oh, yeah, because worked. they made an album yeah. together. There you go. We, we, uh, we well, work together. He's um, featured on Jarek's album. Yeah. So um, five it, five months ago, he basically hit me up like, hey, let's kick it. You know, let's catch up. Let's hang out. And then I was like, you know what? It's been a while. We haven't really talked in uh, in a minute. So we decided to just hang out in my place. And this is this is the guy that actually got me into writing music which is oddly enough oh, i appreciate that That's when he first texted me he said he wanted to do a cover and then i was thinking he was probably trolling me mm -hmm. um because i've never seen him sing or rap so and you never told me that you like music you know bruh like i don't know just god's plan i think yeah. And it was t like totally random. All this was totally random because it all started. Actually, we hung out before five months ago. That's just when the project started. Because before that, even with Chris Mark, our other homie. True, true. Um, so we did all that, but I think it all revolved around like what we did as far as like craft and things like that. Because you were a videographer. Uh, yeah, videographer. At the yeah. Time. Yeah. Just like we technically like were working together, you yeah. know, because you had your clothing line and I was basically doing videos for you. Um, right, right, right. Nice. And just hit it off after that. And then how did that happen? I was super random when I just came to your house one day. And I don't know. I guess you saw my videos and you were, you thought you could hang. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I was like, hey, bro, let's, let's do a cover. Or let's just mess yeah. around. Let's just mess around. But I didn't think you were serious. And then all of a sudden I saw it all over social media. I'm like, damn. <laughs> it's really out there. What do you think I do around here, bro? Yeah, I know. You can't just not say and archives. not do it. Um, but I was, because I just saw you doing covers at the moment. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I didn't, until that night when I when I came over there, and I was just like, you know. And then you played some beat. What, what song was that? Out of My Mind. Out of My Mind, yeah. You played that beat, and I was like, bro, this shit's hard. Yeah, it was kind of like the weekend vibe. Um, mm -hmm. It was funny, because uh, when Johnny used to work at... Um, a boba place. Right. He played my song and then like a oh, customer yeah. came in and Johnny, you know, Johnny's always like, oh yeah, that's the, that's the artist right there. I'm just like, dude, I'm <laughs> I will put you on blast. I was just oh, drinking my, my boba over here and then he was like, <laughs> yeah, that's his song, that's his song and then um, the, the guy was like, The Weeknd? I'm just like, oh, at least it sounded like The Weeknd, I guess. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was serious. The Weeknd. Yeah, that's, that's The Weeknd. I'm all like, no, it's not. That's him. Because <laughs> he has, like, the 80s vibes. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like his latest album has, like, that kind of vibe. So they, they probably thought it was The weekend, which is, <laughs> I mean, a cool compliment, I guess. I told uh, you. That hilarious. Beat, that beat was hard, I told you. Yeah, and then we made Late Night, which is Felicia's favorite song. My favorite. It yeah. is. Yeah, she told me that she played that song on repeat when it first came out, which is... Yeah, I did. I'm not going to lie. I did the same thing. It's good. It's a yeah. good song. It wasn't because, you know, I heard my own voice. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of it, but... No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was because it was really... It was catchy, bro. So I was like, dude, dude this shit sounds is like it, something. This, that's the song with the line that he says, right? I just yeah, want to blow, blow, your, blow your really? back out. Really? <laughs> blow your back out? That's my favorite line of that thing. I just want to blow your back <laughs> Like that melody and then that line is just, it's just just like perfect, you know? <laughs> You told me what it's about, so I'm like, all right, let's get, you know, <laughs> explicit, I guess. Explicit. You blow your back out. Yeah, blow your back out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you haven't heard the song, just look it up on, on all platforms. Uh, late Night, Jarek Image. Um, yeah, and then you hear Johnny say, uh, Franco, sing, Dior. Yeah. Uh, blowing your back out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I it's funny because, like, when you read lyrics it doesn't sound as good as like when singing sing it, it or like, like rapping it song, you know yeah it just sounds so corny like, and like i sure want to huh? blow your back out yeah <laughs> you can re what's that line after that i want to blow your back out what the f was it i only want to blow your back yeah. out because that's all i that's what we we're talking about i thought yeah. it was supposed to be like you know sexual or whatever so i mean well yeah i like it, it you was. know yeah i probably wouldn't do that in like a 
a more love content, like oh, yeah. relationship. <laughs> I'm not gonna say then that. He'll just he won't do it in real life, so don't worry about. Back. Ladies, <laughs> don't worry. He caress, won't blow your back out. Caress your back out. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanna. Then what I, would the line be? Make it up right now. Yeah, it's hilarious. Come on, man, freestyle. <laughs> If it's not blowing your back out, how would you smooth that out? You know? If it's a, uh, it was a really how do you, if how would you, more romantic, yeah. It'd be more in like, like a classic R and B, you know, how would you, dude? Like you know, I'm at the bottom when it comes to writing layers, and you can put me on blast right now. Yeah, <laughs> it takes me like an hour just to write like <laughs> a, one no, sentence. The, no, just like <laughs> on the top of the dome, bro. Freestyle, let's go. How would you say um, blowing your back out and that kind like, of a I smoother would make way? Love to you or some. I don't know. I would, I would make love to your bag. <laughs> no, I'll be more like I behind you. I would, I would make love behind you. It there would, you go. It would transition from like, you know, something about hard day of work and then <laughs> rub your back and then the make love. Song. You know, yeah. you know, massage your back. There you go. Massage your back. Yeah. There you go. But if you're going to give me like a one night stand, I'm like, I'm. Only want to blow your back out. Oh, oh shit. I'm feeling the attraction. No. Want to be up on you. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, uh, to start singing. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, that was a uh, good time. Go a little good intro. tangent. That oh, was... we didn't even ask him the questions. Oh, yeah. Two questions, bro. Two questions. Sorry, First answer. question What is your guilty pleasure? Because oh, <laughs> we like to keep it real, you know? You got to be honest in the podcast, man. Did we already ask that question? We didn't ask it. No, we didn't yet, right? ask it yet. Guilty oh, we asked pleasure. who he was. Man. Wow. Come on. There's gotta be lot, real, Johnny. There's a lot. You have a lot of guilty pleasure. <laughs> yeah, and that's got why it. he blows that's your back out. That's why he blows out. people's back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to stray away from that part, but. Oh, sorry. Right, I'll be more PG, I guess. You know, I just, I like to, um. I just love watching movies. That's, that's not a guilty <laughs> pleasure. I'm trying to be. Some, no, something that you really PG, like, but man. you're kind of embarrassed about admitting. Yeah, I know. I like to watch. Like mine love was. Movies. I love mashed potatoes with ranch and Which sal- is, soy sauce. Sounds disgusting. That's my guilty pleasure. Wow. <laughs> yeah. See. So something like that. Yeah, I think his guilty pleasure is blowing girls Dude, back. I'm so, so okay. <laughs> Fine. I'm a horn dog. Okay. Oh <laughs> there you go. I it's like, okay, bro. It's okay, man. And that's why I'm single and I'm trying to find love and not blow <laughs> girls back out. <laughs> That's sad. That's sad of the podcast, guys. Yeah, Please. He's, <laughs> he's, I'm serious. No. But he's single, so. Yeah, he's single, no. ladies. Look at this guy. Up. I'm like throwing hella. Doing my brand out there. Doing myself out there. I'm single, so yeah. <laughs> Taking advantage of this. Capitalizing on this. We're proud podcast. of you, man. We're proud of you, dude. For uh, for opening up, man. Yeah, keeping it real. Yeah, keeping it real. Dude, I swear. We didn't even work on this. I did not know this is how it works. Super freestyle. You watch the podcast. What and are you I, talking I about? Can't, I can't even lie. That sucks. Oh, God. Yeah. And if you know, I don't edit anything out. So it's oh. it'll be out there. But, you know, this mm-hmm. is going to be a good. Like, we always talk about this, too. It's like just my boy like, Curtis says, you know, I ain't no bitch. Fuck it. Let's just do this. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's not just mm-hmm. that, too. It's just more of. Dude, we're just regular people, you know? Yeah. And I think like when we. I think we portray ourselves, you know, because like we all we all have like a personal brand, because we're all creatives, we're all entrepreneurs, but facts. We like to portray ourselves as not necessarily perfect, but they all I like that version of like the PR version of ourselves, you know, that we only share mm-hmm. the good shit, the good parts of our lives. Yeah, but only in the podcast. Yeah, but when it comes to the podcast, we keep it real out here, and. Um, mm-hmm. It is what it is. All right. So your guilty pleasure is. Yeah, that's it. How do we put that in a better way? Um, you I enjoy. Just, I love women. Pleasure. <laughs> you enjoy pleasure. Okay. There you go, dude. I'm so. His guilty kidding. pleasure this is, is he enjoys pleasure, and what's the <laughs> other? What are what's your current obsession? I'm just kidding, dude. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want what you guys to take this. This is all supposed to be a joke. My guilty pleasure is. I love spaghetti with shrimp. And that's not it, weird. It's not? Because you know yeah, people but use it, meatballs and all that. Is it spaghetti sauce? You know, with Asians, it's a little different. 
Well, I mean, I'm, I probably got that Chinese spaghetti, probably. There you go. Oh. Because Filipino got their own spaghetti. Yeah, I know. They got, um, like, the hot dogs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's kind of, that's the hood shit. I like that, too. But, yeah. Um, so, the second question is current obsession. Current what are you, obsession. like, the last, like, let's say it's just the last couple of weeks. Like, what are you, what's something on repeat or what's something that you really, really been enjoying in the last, like, couple of weeks? Couple weeks or just or longer? Because couple weeks are. All right, I guess in recent, recent. obsession. So couple I guess. weeks. Um, I just been in the lab. I just love, like, I'm not like an artist or anything. I don't come, you know, consider myself, because I, I can't draw with the lick. It's like stick figures or anything. <laughs> but I just love designing, like you know, using um, Photoshop. And I just love designing. Like I, I'm just infatuated with making shirts and cool. that's what i've been doing just kind of cool. i mean grinding yeah. yeah basically i will stay up like till three in the morning yeah yeah Four. it's like sometimes i get like that too um especially when i was doing my album i was just like doing that all night because i i feel like i work better at night too um Singer. yeah mm-hmm. and some people like to work during the day i like to work at night so at night when everything is done everything when all the dust settles you know by myself at home i just get into the laptop, into the Photoshop, and I just, you know, and I use, of course, I look at everything for, like, ideas and, you know, inspiration, stuff like mm-hmm. that, and I just get designing, that's it. I know it sounds boring, but yeah. I mean. That's what I like. That's, it's not, I don't think it's Because I don't play video yeah. games, I don't have cable, I don't yeah. watch TV, so it's like. I don't think a lot of people have cable. I mean, we just stream, yeah. like, have Netflix. Yeah. yeah. Um, or my son. But I feel like that's a pretty good obsession, you know? You know, you're hustling. Yeah, you're working. I'm trying to be like y'all. Master <laughs> Studios. The you got to get it Gaiman. right, man. It's Master called Masterpiece. Master 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 Masterpiece. Master Master Studio. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Felicia, that's Felicia's pet peeve. Masterpiece <laughs> Studio. Masterpiece. <laughs> With a piece, like peace. Peace side. Uh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. P-E-A-C-E. Are yeah. you supposed to look at the camera when you do a podcast? You can do whatever. I'm yeah. looking at you guys right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes, just... sometimes I look at the camera and I'm like, hmm. Yeah, if you have like something to say to the audience, you can do that or just say it. It doesn't matter. Um, camera is just there for people that like to watch um, the podcast. Because some people like to watch, some people just like listening to it. Um, but yeah, I just want to give that option for people, you know? Um, but yeah, today's topic is going to be an interesting one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm already blushing thinking about the topic. Do you know yeah, what the topic ahead. is? Yeah, we're getting deep and not blow your back out type deep, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> something else. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. Um, oh, shit, oh, yeah. Man. <laughs> All right. Uh, Johnny, what's the topic? Um, the topic is rock bottom, hitting rock bottom. All right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. That's, that's little... I told Felicia something different because <laughs> I had a different direction, but you know what? I let the universe decide on what we're going to talk about. And Johnny Bro, you said... you should have warned me, and then I would have said something else. Nah. I, I don't even want to <laughs> stick to this, this topic. No, I, no it's, it's fine. It's a good topic, hitting rock it's bottom. It's a good topic. We've all been there, I feel like. I've I been there. So, yeah. Felicia, have you? Yeah. I think right now I'm kind of in my rock bottom. There you go. Enough. So... Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's a rough time. Do you yeah. want to start it off, Felicia? Oh, man. <laughs> Please. <laughs> So, I don't know. I guess everybody's idea of rock bottom is a little bit different, right? But I think it's like, I think for me, the way I see it is like I'm at my most worst point in my life. And there's, and don't get me wrong, there's aspects of my life that are going really well. Like, obviously, I have my family, my son, Mm -hmm. they're healthy. Anthony's healthy. And like, I'm happy in that aspect. But I think with myself personally, like when I look at myself internally, just there's a lot of things going on mentally and health wise and then in addition in addition to that like financially because you know we're still kind of recovering from the pandemic and there's just been a lot of hiccups like at the last part of it yeah so there's been a lot of like financial stress 
Um, and then I think that stress kind of just absorbs my whole day in a sense. You know what I mean? Because it's unfortunate that you have to think about money so much just to survive. Yeah, because I think when you think about it too much, it just it takes away from everything else. Yeah, you know? it does. And it's like I'm having a hard time trying to find myself amidst like the, the clouds, if that makes sense. I have no idea. I wouldn't be able to yeah. notice that. Just you know looking I mean? at it. Yeah. So, but it's like, but I do. With, that, with that, it's like my health has taken a toll. Like I've gained a significant amount of weight and I can't really control it. Like, and I'm just kind of like reverting back to like ba my old bad habits. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause so. um, I can definitely notice that there's something going on with you. Mm -hmm. Cause I think I know you well enough that I would notice if you're off. Right, right. Um, but then obviously it's... I don't think it's to that point where it's... I feel like I need to do like step in or anything. Right, right, you right. Know? Yeah. Because um, we, we also talked about this before too. Like sometimes you don't need people or you don't want people's help, you know? Yeah. Like, um, and it's like... And I don't like to really talk about it because <laughs> we're talking about the toxic positivity in one of our episodes mm -hmm. not too long ago. And that's exactly what I'm kind of doing in my day-to-day -day, because I don't want people to know that we're struggling. You know what I mean? Because it's such a personal topic, right? Like, people can take it the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, and in reality, it's like I shouldn't really care what other people think about, but it, it definitely takes a toll on, like, my mental health. You know what I mean? Which... Again, I try not to portray that side. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, everything's fine. I'm like, shit ain't really fine right now. Like, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm like, I mean, I'm fucked up. Like, things are kind of going crazy. And But the biggest thing, though, is it's legitimately my health. Like, I am so, my health is not doing well right now. Gotta you know what I mean? Take care of that one. No, I do. That's and a it's big like, one, too. And I'm, and I'm, it's like I have these constant battles. Like, I, I want to wake up and, like, have a good day but it's like something is just everything's messy like if i if that makes sense like my thoughts are messy my organization is messy it's like my home is messy you know what i mean yeah like, it's like your head is just yeah. in chaos right and i'm now. like i that's literally how i feel like i'm so much in chaos and it's like it's hard to even try and focus on sorting through the chaos because it's like on top of that i'm also a mom you know, so it's like I can't sh I, I don't want to show that to my son and I, I feel like I have to be present, you know. So then it's like now it's even more time taken away from trying to figure out right, life, life, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Everybody experience that struggle, everybody. you know, yeah. and it's, it's different for everybody and how you handle it. And, and it's funny. I was thinking the other day, too, because we were talking about, you know, seeing somebody maybe like a therapist or counseling mm -hmm. but i'm like damn that shit costs money too like yeah. nothing's free but then you can also you don't necessarily have to talk to a therapist mm -hmm. you can also just talk to somebody that you think would be a good listener right or somebody that could possibly give you uh solid advice and that's yeah, for that's you true. to decide on who that person is yeah um yeah, because I think everybody goes through it. And, like, we don't like to admit that we are dealing with mental health right. issues, you like know? But it's, it's, it's normal, though. Yeah. Like, it's, we got to yeah. understand. It's but no, the thing it is, is, it's, is, like, it's normal. we accept. I mean, because I think for us that we're a little bit more self-aware that we think it's okay. I mean, obviously, it's okay to have that because, mm -hmm. like, we're... Because it's normal, like we say, it's normal, you know. Um, but for a lot of people, they really get to that point where, mm -hmm. fuck, I don't like, I don't know what to do. Because I've been there before. I've been, I've had multiple rock bottoms, um, mm -hmm. and what I've experienced is probably not that big of a deal compared to other people, you know. Right. Um, but it doesn't minimize it to like what what I was experiencing. Like I was, I really hit. I was really like low at that point, you know, yeah. Um, multi oh, yeah, yeah, multiple situations. But what I do know when you actually hit rock bottom is you're basically being catapulted to like 
something better, you know? Because mm-hmm. you need to, it's kind of like, like shooting a, like a slingshot. It's kind of mm-hmm. like you have to get pulled back, back or down. <laughs> really far. You know? Far back. And then Super it feels, far. yeah, it feels like everything is crumbling in your world, you know? Yeah. Um, but then. It's literally. Once you like finally let go of that, it would just like yeah. shoot you out. And then it's so much. See, and that, that's like. That's I how you like, change. I feel like I'm stuck because. And I, I, I honestly, like, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, I honestly, and I think I've talked about it before. But I, I know the moment things change. And I don't know why it was. But I was having a conversation with my sister. And like, because we're supposed to do something together. Um, and this was like several months ago like i think before mm-hmm. january hit yeah and and i remember i was like so excited and i was i basically told her like well everything was going great at the time and like i i felt so sure in everything that i was doing like i was like I, this is what i'm supposed to do like the creative life is for me like this is the path i'm supposed to be on um and then like she started talking about something that she wanted to do and it was a little different than what we were going to do together you know and then i don't know what it was but after that conversation it was like something something shifted and i and i can't really explain but for some reason something af- like all the moments after that shift like were kind of negative and it's just like things just got out of hand yeah you know cuz and it, and <clears throat> and i think i do a pretty good job at not showing that cuz obviously i'm doing a bunch of stuff but i'm like Damn, I think shit is like I don't it could and I'm be. like in that point where it's like if somebody's holding the damn slingshot they're still holding on and it's probably me and no one but well, nobody wants to let go and I'm like well you know like I think it's just just to piggyback off from what we were speaking about earlier in terms of like counseling and such mm-hmm. like I can't knock on anyone like, in terms of you know because I used to think about that as well as like because you know, you overanalyze things and then mm-hmm. you'll get to the point like do I need counseling? Like, if when you're younger, just like what Jarek was saying, I totally agree. Like, I think you have multiple rock bottoms. Yeah. There's like, I believe, well, as far as I can remember, like the bottom bottoms is like two phases. When you're younger, in your teenage years, you go through all that, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then when you're older, when you're an adult, then you go through it again. But I think when you're an adult, you're more um, developed mentally, mm-hmm. physically, and all that good stuff. Um, and that's when you kind of you know yourself. You can kind of figure out, do I really need counseling? But even then, like you, I'm not saying oh, just due to age you need it or don't need it, what right, happened. Right. But it's like some people really need it, and then it's like, because I've got to that point too where I feel like, oh my god, dude, I really need fucking counseling. Can I cuss? Yeah, yeah. dude. Oh, okay. We've been we've, we've been, been cussing. cussing. What are you talking about? I've been so. <laughs> <dumb>. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so nervous, man? Just chill, bro. But yeah, so it's like, you know. I've gotten that point too, and I. But then I keep telling myself, like, man, you don't need fucking. And I got to like close to just because mm-hmm. you know I got a homie that went to counseling. You know he had anger management, all that shit. But that's a mm-hmm. different story. But I'm like, wait a minute. Besides the money part, because it is fucking mm-hmm. expensive. Like, I don't need counseling. Like, I, I could counsel myself. And then mm-hmm. if you just kind of find the strength from within and just dig deep, um, and it helps to have. I think I believe it helps to have some kind of plan of action Mm -hmm. so like and i know i think a lot of us try to not think it's about a financial status or whatnot Mm -hmm. but it's like i always say money is like air you know i mean you need it so it's like of course you don't chase it what have you but then it's like you get to the point where you're doing so much to where you kind of want to see some kind of results or you know at the end Mm -hmm. the reward or whatnot so it's like and I think, kind of going off of what you're saying, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but like, some, you know, I got to that point too, where it's like, I didn't, even if it has nothing to do with money, just the results. You kind of, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's us being impatient, right? You know, should we just kind of keep going until we, and I think about it, mm-hmm. but you get these mood swings, you know what I mean? Like yeah. One day you just, oh, all right, I'm focused, I'm in a zone, blah, blah. Yeah. You I think, I, was, I think right now, Honestly, because I've always thought about therapy, but again, you know, there's always, sometimes there's like negative connotation attached to the idea of going to therapy. So I've always pushed it off, but I think there's more things happening now that are like, no, bro, you need to go. (laughs) Like as an adult, I can say like, I think I really need to go because I, there's certain things that, you know, that I'm not, 
completely comfortable talking about like maybe once i go to therapy and start working it through yeah but i'm but i'm like <clears throat> no like i shouldn't be thinking those things you know what i mean so i'm like i think i really need to go talk to somebody and this is something that i've like talked to anthony about too so you know and he's really helped me but even him too like one day he's like <clears throat> he was like you know what like i'm gonna tell you this and i don't want you to be mad he's like but you need to go talk to somebody, <laughs> you know, and not like, and that was, that was like out of love, you know what I mean? But I'm like, damn, you know what? I, I know. Yeah. You know? It's just, it's crazy how fucked up society is that we, we put a, like a negative stigma on people going to therapy. Mm -hmm. We think, we assume that, you know, they're crazy or, they're all fucked up in the mm -hmm. head, but you know what? The truth is, everybody's fucked up in yeah. the head. Because you yeah. don't, you don't actually know. Especially now, <laughs> it's yeah. like, in a sense, like going to school in math class or something. Like, you can't figure it out yourself sometimes. So you need a teacher to give you the, an you know, help you get the answers and what right. have you. So it's like sometimes in life, dude, life there's no manual. You know, there's no instructions. Mm -hmm. They don't teach it in school. So when you go through it. You know, um, it's all on you. And, of course, these guys, these people are professionals at what they do. Right. So I don't think it'll hurt to go just to kind of see what you're going to experience. And maybe mm -hmm. it will help. Yeah. Yeah. But how um, about, man, tell us your, your story, bro. Yeah. What's your wrong You don't have to go, like, full into detail. Yeah, but, I'm like, tell us. What, I'm going to do what Felicia did. I'm not going to go into detail. So yeah. Just uh, surface. Just, you know. <laughs> no, I don't want to. You know, that, just, honestly. Maybe, maybe later on. Yeah. <laughs> like, honestly. um, for the podcast, I always kind of, I want people to share whatever they're comfortable with. And obviously, mm -hmm. I want them to be authentic. But then, if you're not ready to share whatever you, you know, whatever you went through or whatever you're not ready to talk about, then don't talk about mm -hmm. it. What is um, the difference between, I mean, because I think, um, I've already gone through it. Versus, you know, I think, Felicia, you said you're currently going through it? Yeah. I mean, like, I definitely, because you talked about two phases. I definitely went through, like, the younger phase. What was and that? that one's kind of, <laughs> it was like, <laughs> so I just, you know, I was a big partier. And I think we all were, I yeah. think I was, I was very rebel rebellious. I think I had, like, a very um, unusual, well, I, I think to an Asian mother, probably a very horrible relationship with their mother, you know, because in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm American. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I, ain't gonna, I ain't gonna follow your rules. Facts. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I had a really rough time with my mother <clears throat> um, trying to understand, like, how she was brought up and being raised with her values and morals. Um, but with that, like, I left home early. I mean, I lived on with my, with a roommate and she was actually one of my best friends for a while. Um, over on Sutro, and I was involved with a lot of, like, shady things. Yeah. <laughs> things that should not be happening, and I was exposed to. Um, and then down the road, you know, just, like, constant partying. So much so that I did end up going. I went, if you know what PAR is. <laughs> yeah. I went there twice. I'm familiar uh, with that place. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went to PAR twice, and. A lot of times. I was in the newspaper, and then finally it was, like, I think I was just about to turn 20. I was turning 20. I was like, damn. It was my second time going, and I was like, I need to get my shit together. It's crazy because I didn't even know that. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, that's right. We're going that deep, was when, right? That's yeah. when we stopped no. talking to each other. But, yeah, like, legit telling you, like, I was partying probably, like, five times a week. And I was drinking all those days. <laughs> I didn't remember going to one of the parties, though. And, like, you know, it's like you think you're cool. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Obviously, I was underage. I was yeah. Like, That's a common when you're a thread. kid, too, it's you know just like I mean? you do stupid shit and you yeah. think you know everything, you know? But I, and some of the stories, like, I, I've had a really, I have, I've had a lot of horrible experiences, too, that I think, like, when I told Anthony, he's like, dude, what the fuck, you've been around? Like, it's <laughs> not, it's not, like, I'm not proud of it, you know? And it's weird to think about me going through those experiences because I'm like, damn, that shit really happened. Like, that's really like, how did I survive? Like, how am I here today? You know what I mean? So I don't know. I'm also very thankful that, <laughs> that I made it to this point. You know, hey, and you're way, killing it, Felicia. Yeah. Honestly, the, way I was, the way I was treating myself, you know what I mean? It, it 
didn't seem like I'd have a good, long, healthy life. Because honestly, it was like, yes, you made all those mistakes. Mm-hmm. Or let's just not even say mistakes. It's just... Listen, there are experiences. The lessons, yeah, experiences yeah, exactly. and the lessons that you learn. Uh, but well, look you know, at you now, you know. I got you're, some stories to tell to my son. You got... Mess you're, fuck up. you're pretty much have your shit together. Aside, yeah. aside, aside from, from this moment. <laughs> aside, aside from so, rock bottom number two. <laughs> exactly. But everything else, you know, you got some yeah. but good, there's, there's a good shit somewhere. going. Um, yeah. And that's why, that's why I wanted to invite Johnny on this because, well, I don't really know uh-huh. a lot of the details on your, like, past, but you briefly talked about it. And yeah, so let's get into so, uh, your, yeah, let's, your rock bottom. Let's let's hear it, dude. Whatever I, you want to you share, know, bro. Whatever honestly, you want to share. I honestly think it's a common thread. Just piggyback off what you just said. Mm-hmm. You know, if, like our adolescent days and what have you. <laughs> That's just. I think everybody gone through that. Yeah, because like I remember our conversation when you were, when I told you like, oh, I want to talk about hitting rock bottom, and then you were like, no, I don't really want to talk about that. But then I told you like, dude. <laughs> Think about all the the kids or like whoever is I don't know if younger people listen to this podcast, mm-hmm. but if they do, if they're going through whatever you guys went through, you know? Shit away. Yeah. And then where you guys are at now, they could see that, huh, if they got their shit together after a while, I could probably do the same, you know? Um, even if it just like triggers that like one thing. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, a big ass change. But if people get to even just think that it's possible, mm-hmm. that's, that's already a win, you know? Um, yeah, it's, it's actually, yeah, I mean, like I said, common thread. But um, you just got to, I think you just got to pull through it. I mean, that's kind of the only way because um, the best teachers, just life experiences, you know, and you got to go through those things. Um, pretty much just like Felicia, I, I went through the same thing. You know, yeah. Partying. Uh, we might have crossed paths. I feel like I've known you before. Have. Yeah. Because I definitely you. know Ricky. You know my cousin, yeah. So we, bu- yeah, Ricky, that's another one too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shouts out to Ricky. What's up, Weeks? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that was my first rock bottom, I think, going through the rebellious stage. Um, and Asian family, you know how that is. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of expectations. I'm sure there's expectations in every family, but I'm just saying, like, in terms of what I went through, um, there's a lot of judgment, you know, kind of cash away and kind of, yeah, they expect you to, everything is just about graduating and becoming a Mm freaking doctor or something. Yeah. (laughs) Some kind of, but, um, us being like Americanized, we just kind of. And that's what kind of leads what my brand is about, just kind of, you know, about life. Uh, by the way, Mang is about life. It's life in Chinese, Cantonese specifically. Mm-hmm. Also, it's double entendre, uh, motivating every new generation. So basically just the mission statement is to motivate every generation to do what you love in life and fuck the status quo, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's hear about a brief... Uh, Am I going around it? I was going around it, huh? Yeah. 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 Let's uh, let's talk about how your adult rock bottom. You don't have to share details, obviously, oh. but like kind of just explain just a little bit of like what you went through and like how you got out of it. Because you said you recently got out of it. Is that what? I'm, yeah, yeah. What I heard. Cause we're going. Yeah, let, let, let's skip the the first phase. That's that one's a little. Because every I feel like everybody's hat has to go through it. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're a kid, you do something stupid. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Par. That's familiar. Yeah. A um, <laughs> few times. Unfortunately. But yeah, let's hear, let's hear the, the grown-up uh, rock bottom, bro. Yeah, that was actually recently, bro. Like, I'd say right before 2020 hit. Or no, in 2020, actually. That was like in the midst of it and everything. So just last year, then. Yeah, last year mm-hmm. with fucking COVID and everything else. I'm like, dude. And it just sucks when like everything is just kind of coming in all angles. Right. Everything you're going through. Um, maybe job, career, um, family, friends. I was losing, you don't know, my friend passed away, you know what I'm saying? So that's one thing. And like, it was like 
it felt like it was just pretty close, like year after, you know what I mean? Like more things, like people that I looked up to, you know, I know it sounds kind of, I don't know, weird, but even like celebrities too. During that, even like when my mind's already, uh, my mental's already like kind of hurt at the moment. And I'm already going through and to go through. And then I'm seeing other things like, you know, Nipsey Hussle pass and like Kobe Bryant pass, all that, you know, stuff kind of. And uh, also like my friend's mother passed. And that was all kind of happening like in a sequence. Right, right. It wasn't like, a, you know, a, a big gap in between five years, nothing like that. So and she's kind of she's like a godmother. Um, mm-hmm. She took care of us when we we're, you know, younger, when I was running with the boys, we were doing what we we're doing. Mm. Get in trouble every night before we left the house. She would pray for us, you know, before we could even walk out the door, because she knew what we're doing, <laughs> to get into, yeah. what we're about. So like, she would feed us when I would run away. I, I she let me stay there. Um, she answered the phones when I'm in jail or Wittenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Wittenberg, huh? Oh, dude, like yeah. ju- juvenile detention centers, yeah. all that shit, man. So, yeah, so when she passed, that shit was hard on me, you know? Um, and I had a, in, um, it was hard because going back to the family thing, <clears throat> me and my family, it's different because we're both totally different generation. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, they're hella super Asian, I guess, uh, for lack of better words. And here I am, like, the only one, like, Americanized, and I have this different belief system versus theirs. Right. And there was a communication barrier, I believe. Um, so like, oh, we will always bump heads and like, my family's not the type where I, you know, like your typical, oh, I love you, son. You mm-hmm. know, give me a hug. You're doing great. You know, yeah. how are you today, honey? <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that shit, you know? So like, um, they don't even know many of my problems actually. So if anything, my friends, my brothers, they know me more than, you know what I mean? Like anybody, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. my group of friends. So when... When it comes to holidays, mm-hmm. I'll like you know I'll I'll celebrate with them because mm-hmm. um, you know my family don't really do all that except fucking Chinese New Year's and shit. Right. So yeah, so things like that. So like you know everything like when I vent all that stuff like it was all separate from me and my family, which is kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's weird at all. I no? feel like that's pretty common than you think. Oh really? Because I'm the same way too. Um, obviously, I love my family. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. But. I don't talk to them like I talk to my close friends. They don't know a lot of things. Because I, I have a hard time opening up with my family. There you yeah. go. Um, opening up. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really open up to and my And I don't know. Like, obviously, it, that's part of, a, like, how I was raised. And yeah. um, maybe there was just a disconnect there somewhere that... I think uh, so. But I slowly try to um, be more open. Mm-hmm. Um, at least just, like, you know... Just a little bit. At least like, I can share like the things that I've been doing. Um, but I don't have to go deep into it. Um, but yeah, because I definitely have a lot easier time opening to friends than I think family. that was part of the problem as well. Because <clears throat> mm-hmm. I'm the type that I keep everything bottled in. Mm-hmm. And my friends hate that. Like, I don't really ask for anything. I don't ask for help, really, or nothing like that. And I just, I feel like I could do everything on my own. Right. I could fix my problems. I would do all that. Don't worry about it. I take care of myself and I do all that. And I think and a lot of times I get it from them. Like, dude, you can't keep doing that. And um, so I think all that kind of manifested and it just family problems in my career. And I wasn't, you know, kind of getting what I was. And I'm a very impatient person. So I didn't see what, you know, I didn't get the results quick enough, I guess. Mm-hmm. So all this, everything was hit me from every angle, I believe. And like, and I'm not to say I have... A, that's why I don't tell people, like, my problems, really, because I see other people with real problems, I guess. I mean, but then again, you can't compare problems yeah. when it comes to yeah. life you issues. You can't compare your yeah. issues with somebody but else. But that's what helps me when I see other people go through, you know, and um, overcome their situations, and that that's what kind of I tell myself, dude, be yeah. a little bitch. Yeah, because <laughs> honestly, like, when you look at... If we do compare your problems with other people, obviously don't do that, but then... Sometimes you, when you look at people that actually have, like, real real problems, I guess, like, I don't know what the definition of what a real problem is because everybody's different. But I think it just makes me appreciate more that... Exactly. That's I what do it is. live a better life 
Because it could be worse. Yeah, it could be a lot worse. Right. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people that are dying of like hunger or like wars everywhere. Mm -hmm. But then we're here complaining about, oh, I'm. I'm I had to pay a girl five just broke up for Dunkin' you know? Donuts coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I forget that I'm like just being an ungrateful little bitch. You know? no, exactly. Uh, no, that's exactly. What, I'm not going to lie. That's exactly what helps me at the end of the day. I'm just like, Dude, I can't. And then I look at. And it's just, I think it's, I figured out where recently was. Um, There's a lot of things that you just kind of, you know, you can never stop learning. Mm -hmm. No matter how old you are. <clears throat> so I recently start learning self-love. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Oh. Didn't you guys just talk about that? No. No? Oh, I thought that um, was... we haven't we haven't really gotten into, into deep it. I I saw it somewhere. Oh, okay. But we'll definitely have to talk about that. That comes with like self awareness, self love, and then valuing yourself, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, because that's what actually I learned recently in the last in just like the last few months. Um Right. Because I was always the type of guy to to please other people because I want exactly them, I want them to like me and then I don't yeah. want to have any complications with people mm -hmm. so I was always kind of doing even though if it doesn't feel good to me I would still do it because people expect me to you know right and because like that's what you're supposed to do right but then I've recently realized that I need to put myself first always yeah that's yeah. that's why they tell you on the plane to like put your like mask on first before you know yeah, like before your child yeah <laughs> even though like i get it uh -huh. but it's yeah. like okay. you can't help people else, if you yeah. if you can't even help yourself you know that's true you can't like yeah. if you're drowning how are you gonna save other people you know um everything starts from within that's like the most recent thing i learned i think that's what kind of helped me because all that shit happened with relationships friends family I had to separate myself. That's what it recently happened. And and for me, it's like I felt like I had to, like, I don't know, find validation. And that was my problem, too. And I just figured, like, you know what? Because friends and family, they're going to think what they think. I mean, of course, they love you. Um, but some might just not understand or just yeah. kind of have their own. Yeah. So you I just got to figure it out. And my thing was, like, I, I worry. Like, I don't care about what people think. But then I do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like yeah, I I I care about what they think, like as far as like what I think of them or how I portray myself and whatnot. But it's then again, it's, you know, I don't care about what people really opinions about me. So yeah. I had to separate myself from everybody. And that's what it was, you know, living by myself, separate from everybody. Um, and I, at the end of the day, I just kind of like hope everyone will understand. And I'm not gonna lie, I lost. Uh, I fell off with some of my bros that I grew up with, mm -hmm. and recently I'm starting to connect with them, and everything just kind of works. It's weird, like, when you work on yourself, when you love yourself, you respect yourself, then you, you help yourself. Everything pulls through. Everything pulls through. And then everything with the universe just kind of work its way. Mm -hmm. And now I'm starting to pick it back up. My boy hit me up. And now I'm talking to him. And, like, everything's kind of... Yeah. As soon as 2021 hit, because I made a promise to myself, you know, that's what you got to do. You just got to, like, mentally just got to be there. Um, make, make up your mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And no matter what happens... You're going to go through it. Right. You know, you're just going to help yourself through yeah, it. Yeah. Honestly, that was like kind of the turning point for me too. Um, when, yeah, 2021 hit, I was I was in Cabo, you know. You, when you look that. at it, because like I was on vacation, when people are watch, watching it through like social media, it looks like I'm having the best time of my life. I'm on vacation. I'm on the beach, whatever, doing whatever. Right. Um but then when I was there, it just made me realize that I wasn't valuing myself. I wasn't setting the standards on how I wanted to be treated. Um, and me realizing that was a big, big turning point. Because um, honestly, in the last year or two, I was kind of rock bottom. And it was because of a past relationship yeah. there's always the girl you know <laughs> it's, it's always, always the, the girl, girl. Yeah. Um, you sound like yeah because like that was my first rock bottom too like my my younger days it sucks uh, yeah I yeah know. my first like real breakup of my girlfriend we were together for like five and a half years wow yeah so when we broke up that that was 
that was my first rock bottom. I was depressed for solid, five years, at least like, yeah. no, not five years. Because yeah. they say, you know, especially if you're really in love, mm-hmm. however long you guys been together, that's how long it takes for you to get over it when you're done. And I, I kind of, I hope maybe, that's not the case. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, I think it just. I don't think yeah, that's, mine was longer, son of a bitch. I, <laughs> no. I don't think it has to be like that kind of ratio, but I mean, I get it. Like, but it's totally up to you, you know. Like, depending on how fast you grow, because like if you go quickly, that's true. Um, you could get over it quickly too. So, um, yeah, I think. Yeah, we should just be. We should just. I don't know if normalize is the right word. Um, be more acceptant of. That. Everybody goes through, you know, the rock bottom. We all right. do. And all like do. when when you're if you're in it right now, just like Felicia is. You're in it to win it. <laughs> exactly. Um, I guess in a sense that's true. Because if you right? really I mean, think about it, if you're getting pulled way once, back. Yeah, once <laughs> that shit is somebody lets go or something lets go, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it will. It'll I'll be, be right so much where better. I need yeah. to be. You gotta understand, like. So catch me next year, but guys. But honestly, you'll, like you'll, you going through that, that's how you're supposed to go through it, you know. Yeah. Um, and no other way. No, I get it. Because I don't see like if you don't go through like all the dark times, you'll never grow. I feel mm-hmm. like because we get com- comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and we'll never learn. Uh, yeah. It's like it's like Tupac says, man. Like through every dark night, a brighter day lies ahead, and it's true because. I know it's cliche, what have you, and like, I don't want to say, oh, it's easier said than done, but because we all went through it, like, I recently went through it, so it's, mm-hmm. trust me, there's no other way, you, there's no way to be around it, you just got to go right through it. Yeah. yeah. And Can't avoid it, I'm in it. There you go, like, yeah. And I know I'm in it, too, you know yeah. what I mean? You know, I, know I, always, I always looked at, it's weird, like, I always look, I always frown, you know, I always, like, thought people who were like suicidal or anything like that like or mm-hmm. people who committed suicide i'm always like man that's and before it would be like that's fuck oh it is fucked up it's part it's not a solution it's not an option period but i used to like look down on it mm-hmm. like man these people are fucking kill themselves so that's coward that's you know shit yeah. Like that. yeah yeah because we actually had a friend that did you know take his own life yeah i had one and yeah. i i agree i think honestly <clears throat> That whole situation, that was that was a dark time, too, because mm. I think a lot of us felt a lot of guilt. I mean, personally, I felt kind of a little bit of guilt. Um, yeah. Cause cause I, was, I was supposed to hang out oh, with wow. him the, oh, the, like, a day. couple of days before oh, it happened. Damn. Because um, he had asked me to go, and I, I bailed on him. Like, I didn't go. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. Like, yeah, that might have, that probably, like, fucking fucked you up for a while it did like i was like i would go there all oh, wow. the time and just like cry yeah um, and i think th- that situation i for a while i was like i did feel like people who did that was doing it selfishly because i'm like look at how mm-hmm. it's affecting everybody else but now that yeah. we're understanding mental health a little bit more it's like we can't see it that way because exactly. that's a real, real option in their mind and that's a real issue. So it's like, yes, it can be selfish. That can be a, a perspective of the situation, but the real root of the issue is that they really had a problem. You know what I mean? And in their minds at that moment that that was like an option. Yeah, because honestly... I totally, yeah, I totally think different now about it. Yeah. Just, yeah, when I was on my rock bottom, I did... Not to the extent that I was like really ready to do it, but, but it crossed yeah, your mind. It, crossed your mind. it did yeah, cross I my know. mind. Same here. I'm like, what the fuck? Because yeah, it's like, it does. It does. It's, when you think about it, it's sometimes like you would think that it would be just like all the pain that you're yeah, going it through, it would just be over. You it's know? the pressure. You but know? I never, obviously, I never acted on it. I, I think I never had the courage to do it. Um, but it did cross my mind. For so it to I'll, even just cross your mind, which it never yeah. had for me. So yeah. It's like, for it to do that, I'm like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. This is pretty serious. <laughs> yeah. So it's... I don't like. I don't want to say I... I mean, I do understand. I understand that that could be a possibility mm-hmm. for people. And I don't want that to be the case. But it's it a serious issue, you know? It um, is. And it really happens. And yeah. 
it's devastating, you know what I mean, to say the least. It's still not an option ever. Yeah. Because honestly, though, I even thought about I feel it. for it. Because, right. you know, when I understand I, it's it. Like oh. you, should, you would want to hope that things would be caught prior to that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you just, you, you've seen people, there's, and again, I don't want to compare, but it's like you see people who just way the fuck bottom, like, oh my God type, mm-hmm. like. How did you, like, survive from that shit? Yeah. yeah. And they overcame, and then they became better. Yeah, even if you think about, like... I couldn't have done it. I would look at their stories and my whole shit. I couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, a lot of uh, the successful people, like, if you really listen to their stories, mm-hmm. a lot of them hit rock bottom, you know? Um, oh, and good. look at where they're... I'm about to be real successful, guys. You know, <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know, honestly, I can... S- I will see that. Because, <laughs> honestly, I've always... I always... I've always known that... You and Anthony are gonna do something big. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, you probably you guys are very you're probably being impatient at the moment because you know you want <laughs> shit to happen right now, yeah. and I get it because I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, um, same way. You know? Same here. I think that's just that's just normal for everybody. But process. Mm-hmm. It's a process. <laughs> but the thing is, the is I'm very, I'm very straight up when it comes mm-hmm. to that, and. I definitely know that you guys are going to be successful. Wow. I just can tell. I can tell who's, who's, <laughs> who's in it, you know? Because I've known, I know some people that are trying to do what we're doing. Yeah. And I'm not like bagging on people. And then I'm just saying that some people, I feel like they don't have it in them. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right. They, um, because not everybody can be... That's why they call it like a 1%, right? Like, not everybody can be at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think I have to take that as advice, too. Like, I, we just got to be patient, you know? Yeah. It's, and um, I, think, I think maybe we're only impatient right now because so much is going on. Well, yeah. So much wrong is going on, mm-hmm. you know? So it's kind of like, are we even doing this? Because... Um, in the the biggest component is not the financial issue, but it's still a, a a big enough component to like weigh down on our situation, you know. But still, it's like we're still trying to do this, and and neon ballon. But when there are financial, um, I guess walls, it does kind of put a little dent in your business. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah, it's yeah. like. If you have a business, a lot of times all that overhead that's coming out of your own pocket, you know what I mean? So it's like you have to put in so much. But see, that's the thing. We understand that. So I'm like, we just got to pull through. We just got to do it. Yeah. Because if you think about it, figure it out. Let's just put it in the working out at the gym kind of thing, you know, Mm -hmm. or like trying to be physically healthy. If you just consistently go to the gym, exercise, consistently Mm -hmm. eat healthy. Right. There's only. One one, re- one, one result, road, yeah. yeah, one result that's gonna end of that. Yeah. You're gonna be healthy and you're gonna look good, or, you know, whatever. But then, so if you think about every little thing that you're doing now, and trust me, trust me, I get it because I'm so hard on myself too. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I just released an album. How come I don't have fucking million streams <laughs> or whatever, you know? Or I don't have like so many fans. Like it's it's frustrating, but I'm your fan. You got you yeah. got to look at it like a more like. Even like the macro aspect of it, mm-hmm. yeah. Saying? Every little because just like the gym reference, once you s- it sucks. Everything in the beginning sucks. Hitting mm-hmm. it, waking up in the morning fucking sucks. Going to the gym sucks. Starting your run sucks. But as soon as you get into ten or fifteen minutes of it, That's your true. body's gonna get numbed. And then after that, <laughs> as soon as you start seeing some results in the mirror, yeah, it becomes an addiction. That's true. So in a sense, if you're using that in you know what you do in life and what have you, like. If you start seeing little things like, for example, mm-hmm. you, Jared, not even doing music, had no idea. All of a sudden, fucking five or six months later, yeah, you have an album, yeah, like things like that. Like that's that's all you need to keep yourself up. Yeah, you know and with even you, Felicia, it's like, you know, y'all got married, you have a son, yeah, masterpiece. You got another studio, and little things are kind of creating. So we got to. Sometimes I think we just gotta pat ourselves in the back because mm-hmm. that's the thing. It's like a boxing reference I always use. Once you're in the ring, you don't know what's going on. You can't yeah. really see. That's why you have a coach. Mm-hmm. They that's tell you, true. They tell you what's going on. So when you're just so used to this ongoing, every day, every minute, every hour, every second, you don't really stop to think what you put in. 
the That's work you true. put in. Yeah, it's crazy because like, obviously I'm doing what I'm doing. In my head, I'm not doing enough. You will yeah. never. But do then, that. Yeah. in other people's perspective, is they apparently yeah. I seem so busy and yes. doing so many different things. Exactly what it is. Um, yeah. And then you probably don't see that We're because you know you're in it. Yeah. But like if look, you, you guys know. opened a studio in the pandemic. And you upgraded. upgraded the um, so it's yeah, it is weird because like even when like you hear it or like the other day we got like a message, and like they were like really thankful for our studio and stuff, and I'm like, is this real? Like, so yeah. it's like I can't even like, it's like I can't even believe the good parts. You know what I mean? But I think again, that's just part of like the mental shift. I think I just need to work on is. I need to start focusing more on that. Yeah, like you got to focus on the small wins. Exactly. You know? Those are the two things. And I told myself, too, um, 2021 came, you know, my New Year's um, resolution. I was like, I'm going to work on my mindset mm-hmm. and my attitude. Right. Those two things. Yeah. And I've been, like, hard on it. Every time, you know, I would check myself, too, once I started to go back to my normal yeah. sh- shit. And ever since, I don't know if I told you, but, like, when 2021 hit, it started off good. Mm-hmm. Cause I changed my mindset. I like soon as you make up your fucking mind, like okay, you know what? There ain't no turning back. Right. Not that I'm fucking there and everything, but I'm saying like, it's a constant lo- struggle. You know. Yeah, everything that I kind of like overcame and like I started seeing little things that I appreciate. I started seeing, you know, I started appreciating the things that I'm like my progression. You know, even if it's a small, minute um, detail, what have you, but just through the process and you starting to see these things and then you appreciate it versus before I was blind by it. Yeah. All I was waiting for is where's the fucking big. I don't where's know. Where's my big break? Yeah, right? where's the fucking yeah. um, gold in the end of the rainbow type shit? Yeah. Like the pot of gold, but it, it's not even like that. And I realized it's a fucking journey. It is. It's yeah, like a and it's crazy too how, regardless of what you guys believe, um, if you believe in like any spirituality or if you're a religious person, but like there are some days when I'm so down, like not necessarily like rock bottom, but like sometimes I question. I'm a down day. Yeah, I question my abilities. I question my, basically myself on if I'm doing the right thing. And then all of a sudden you get a random message from a random person, you know? And yeah. then it's just like, oh, you're you're amazing. Like, it's, you know, there's like, I'm so inspired by what you're doing. It's like, when you yeah. see those kind of messages, it's just like, you just got to remind yourself <laughs> that people are watching you all the time. Yeah. And Especially what we're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's always eyes on us. Even though we're not at the, like, superstar famous right, level right. or whatever. But locally, we're here to... At least, I like to think about that. Like, I want to inspire people to... Inspire. Make an impact. Make an impact bring to... Bring positive change. Yes. Yeah. And honestly, my kind of goal is... I just want to wake people up. What did you say to me? Wake up. What? When you're, what, <laughs> when you told me when we ate sushi about wake waking up. up. Oh, you, yeah. Once once you wake up. It's a fucking wrap. It's, that's it. <laughs> it there, you can't go back. It's crazy. It's like once you realize how life works. Yeah. Um, Ain't nothing stopping you. It's just, there's, when you look back at it, it's just silly, you know? Um mm-hmm. I'm sure you have, you know what I'm talking about, right? What do you mean? Just like waking up and like realizing that What's there's more to life than just being, uh, I don't want to say sheep, but like following the mm-hmm. the societal like norm, right. I guess. I mean, I know what you mean, but I don't, I don't think I've necessarily hit that yet. The thing that, is, yeah, hit that yet, if yeah, that when, makes sense. If you're currently like, going I'm aware, through it. I'm yeah. aware. Yeah. But I'm not there. I'm yeah, because like that's the guess, still on that journey. That's definitely like going the first step. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's like we all do. Like we know what to do, and that's the thing I want to say too. I hate to make it sound so fucking easy, but it's like it's not easy. To, it's simple. Uh, yeah, it's simple. <laughs> there you go. It's simple. But like that's what I used to tell myself when I go through shit. Like when I'm fucking, um, you know, just when I'm down and depressed, mm-hmm. and I tell myself I'm like, bro, like literally, you have to get up. There's no other solution. Either you just sink yeah. or swim. You know what I mean? So why not now? Why not right. sooner the better? 
even though that's harder I mean easier said than done okay give yourself some time but get the fuck up yeah and like gratitude was a big big um, life changing um, I don't know if skill is the right word but I don't think it takes skills it's more like something. Uh, I don't know how would you describe that is that a skill a habit? Nah, because anybody, anybody could a do A lifestyle. It. I think, yeah, I think lifestyle yeah. is a good... If you're grateful, everything just comes to you, I feel like. And sometimes, like, it's it's so... You have to decide, though. It's about it, choices. Yeah, it's, it's so silly. And, like, I don't... It's not that I'm bragging, but once I became more grateful and just, like, stop complaining... And there you go. You're absolutely right. All those... A- Different things, all those uh, variables work yeah. together. And, then, and I've know. told you the story about like the Grateful Gardens when we had yeah. lunch. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I've shared it in the podcast before, but I want to go deep into this like on a later episode, but I just want to go briefly. Um, so there's one moment. This was, yeah, bef- um, before 2020, mm-hmm. December, December 2019. Flat broke. I had no idea how I was gonna pay my bills, and I never, I don't, I never wanted to ask my parents for money, you know, That's scary. Um, because I told my mom like, oh, I'm gonna be great, because like I quit my job like a year before that, yeah. like, I can't crawl back home, yeah, man. and then <laughs> I didn't want to be asking for money and yeah. like shit, right. I, but then I was like, fuck, I'm so stressed, and then that was kind of like one of the rock bottoms too, because like I just ended a relationship, and then it's more of a situation ship, but you know. That's for a different story. <laughs> and then I was, I was also fucking broke as hell. Didn't have a job um, because I decided that I didn't want to work for people. But, mm-hmm. you know, that's a different story too. But at that moment, we, after our meditation yeah. class, we decided to go eat at Grateful Gardens, which is ironic because it's in the name, Grateful. Mm-hmm. Um Signs. Yeah. We were driving there. And we're like, oh, yeah, let's see the Grateful Gardens. And then I was like, fuck. I, don't know. <laughs> I was like, obviously, I wanted to eat because I was hungry. <laughs> but then. You picked the most expensive it's, place. You know, Grateful Gardens. I was healthy then, so I yeah, was trying to eat healthy. It wasn't. Like, obviously, it's not the most expensive, but it's it's a little pricey. It's pricey to eat it's, healthy. Yeah, especially if you're broke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, Especially if you don't have any money. Everything's pricey, right? Um, I would have thought McDonald's or something, yeah, bro. But I was the only one that's broke, apparently. So we all decided to uh, went to Grateful Gardens, and then I was like, you know what? When we sat down, I was so stressed, like driving there. But then when we when we finally sat down, I I just changed that mindset in my head, and I truly believed it too. I was like, I don't give a fuck how much this meal costs. I have credit card anyway, so, you know, <laughs> it's fine. Um, so I really felt it that I didn't care about money mm-hmm. at that moment. And a week later, kid you not, dude, I got a gig that gave me money to pay my bills for the next month, you know. And then, obviously, the bowl just got rolling after that. Um, but, of course, you met Faith halfway, though. It's not like you just fucking, like, yeah, think positive and I'm just yeah, going to uh, eat a sandwich and fucking yeah, obviously, like I, fall on my lap. Yeah. You know, you know I work hard. Yeah, there you go. Um, but then, like, part of it, too, is just, like, believing that good shit will happen and good shit will happen, you know? Because mm-hmm. um, after that moment, I never had to worry about money ever again. And that was just, like, a small shift, you know? Um and obviously, like, everybody has got their own situation, but that's just, if you want to take my advice, cool. If not, that's cool, too. Like, live live your life how you want to live, you know? Right. But you got to put effort. Fate can only take you so far. Yeah. You yeah. You got to meet that shit halfway or else. Yeah. But, yeah, just like that shift of the mindset on um, thinking positive, I guess, that everything will work out or that you're going to be successful someday, that all this is going to make sense, you know? Yeah. All the shitty struggles, all the people, nobody watching your shit, nobody listening to your shit, mm-hmm. nobody buying your shit. Yeah. 
that will, if you just keep going, it's just like. Gotta keep chugging through. Honestly, everybody here that's sitting on this table, and like, obviously, I know some friends too that are doing some great shit. I can honestly say that everybody's in the right um, path. Path. Yeah. And that kind of, it was part of the push too, like, I don't know how to say it, but. Everything just kind of, I'm not saying like, okay, go look for signs. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or wait for signs. But just do you, make up your mind, go for it, and you'll eventually start seeing it once it starts happening. Like, for example, when you guys finally, when you guys moved back from Vegas, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you did your thing here. Yeah. I had no idea about Neon Babylon until Ricky told me. He's like, hey, I'm going to go pick up, you know, this shirt because I got from Anthony. Your boy. I'm like, wait, what? Anthony's back? <laughs> and that's when I was like, oh, okay. And then I went to you. Um, what next door? Yeah, just yeah. down the hall. And Anthony, me knowing Anthony, you know, back in fucking forever ago in school, he was quiet as fuck. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He was super quiet guy. Um, but then when I start, you know, when I talked to him, when I met him at the shop, he just his whole like demeanor, everything changed. And that's I think what sparked it too because I got, I was always doing my clothing thing. However, I got caught up in the hustle. Mm-hmm. And you know, shout out to my boy Curtis, man. I, don't, I wouldn't be here without him too. I gotta, I gotta, also uh, put that out there. So that's my boy right there, my partner for Main Clothing as well. But anywho, so yeah, I got caught up in a hustle. I was just slanging sneakers and shit. Yeah. Better than selling drugs, kids. Um, <laughs> so I was just selling sneakers, flipping sneakers and shit. And I talked to Anthony. I met up with him that day. And um, dude, his the way he just kind of. Um, his persona, everything, the way, like, he just spoke. He was very confident. Mm-hmm. Dude was, like, hell, you know, he's pushing me. And he's like, what are you wearing? And I'm like, oh, Supreme, blah, blah, blah. And I had all this fucking Supreme shit on. Yeah. And um, he's like, why don't you wear a main? Why don't you wear your own shit? And then I was like. <laughs> very Anthony. Oh, that's <laughs> yes, my husband. Like, Damn, he's like, yeah, fuck all that. And then, he's, and then we started chopping up for fucking over an hour, dude. Yeah. Ricky, I felt bad because he was just quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, me, you know, we we started, um, we got into it and um, the conversation. And I just and I started seeing you guys, and to me, you know, looking from the outside, however you want to call it, I'm seeing you guys like, oh shit, y'all came back, y'all got your own shop. Mm-hmm. Anthony's doing his clothing line, he's totally different. The dude's fucking, you know what I mean? To me, I'm like, and I looked up to that, you know, and that shit inspired me. I'm not gonna lie. And from there on, I'm like, right, I'm gonna get back to my shit. Yeah, because honestly, like once you level up. Um your circle will change, you know? There you go. Oh, it's more of like, not I, once you think differently. I believe in energy. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Then you will gravitate towards uh, people that are like similar to that. Because like, we didn't talk for 10 years, you know, yeah, however know. long. No, like How I haven't long? seen Felicia. Like maybe I've seen her maybe like once or twice in like the last 10 years. Yeah. And then obviously she came back and then, you know, because we went to the same high school together. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And my relationship was more closer to PJ. Yeah. And so like you were just kind of there. And I, when did I, what did I, when did I see you when I was pregnant, right? I was yeah. Pregnant. I think you had your baby shower and yeah. then you're like, hey, like, you know, we knew each other from high school. Like, why don't yeah. you come over? I was like, oh, sure. And then when you guys moved back and I think we just. I think you were like on the healthy kind of thing. And yeah, then, like, I was on he, my health kick and we yeah. work out and stuff. Yeah, and, and um, why not get back to that? I know yeah. that's what I'm. I trust me. That's I need what to get I'm back. Trying to do. Maybe we should go but back to the because we used to go to a gym. At least, oh, my gym's know. open twenty four hours now. <laughs> we get, I got there's the no excuses. Gym. I got the email today that oh. they opened it up twenty four hours. Well, oh, it's time amazing. For back, but um. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy because like after ten years, we're here. We get here. We are again. You know, yeah. like we're in the same circle again. And then same circle for you. Leveled up. Yeah, we've known each other for like four or five years. We never really hang out, but then now like we're in the same circle. Yeah. You know? everything happens and then for a reason. You know, my husband, yeah. and it's like, yeah, what the hell? And yeah. I would have never thought like. Nowhere in my mind in high school was I like, this is what we're going to be doing 10 yeah. years from now. Like, what the hell? Yeah, that's crazy. Isn't you know? That crazy? But you see what I'm saying, though? Every time you cross paths, with pe- you meet people for a certain reason. Yeah. And things happen for a certain reason. I believe that. Like, it's God's plan. Like, yeah. Because, like, like, if you never came over, I probably wouldn't even do an- my music, honestly. Um, yeah. And then, like, meeting all these people through even just, like, 
you know, through the studio. Yeah. You meet Or even, somebody. like, you talking to Anthony. Like, you and PJ be talking to Anthony like y'all are friends. And I'm like, uh-uh. We are <laughs> friends, Felicia. <laughs> We're friends That's now, you know. That's my friend first. It, it That's used my to, friend first. It used to be um, Anthony was just Felicia's husband. Yeah. You know, I was just and like. And then it would be like. They talked to me and then I talked to Anthony, but now they just cut corners. <laughs> we cut the middle, man. You, know? you just text Anthony whenever you want. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Kidding. Let's copyright that. So he started music because, so it's just, if anything, you know, yeah, when it's on famous, the podcast. No, remember, I've already, I'm, I'm just I've, kidding, bro. No, I've already talked about it in the podcast. No, I'm man. Always, I just, I just, I'm just here to support my brother. He wants so. to do it right. That's what he said. I want to see y'all yeah, just. Yeah, I've always wanted to do it right. Honestly, I don't really care for. The, obviously, obviously, I care about the money. Let's not get it twisted, yeah. you know. Listen, but, the money comes to the territory. Yeah. It'll be there. We ain't got to worry about that. Yeah, I'm not, but I'm not doing it for the money. So, like, that's, do what you love. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and for for you to like get, trigger me that, and then even Anthony was the one like a trigger thing for me too, yeah. when he told me to basically fuck everything else I'm doing and just do uh, music. Music. Um, yeah, Good. it was just like a turning point for me. And then now, like, working with Francis, all that. Um, yeah, everything just kind of aligns, man. Yeah, Especially with weird. whatever your, like, I call it your world, your realm. Like, back when I was you know, growing up, you know, I was rolling with the boys. And it's like, all that shit was just negative. Mm-hmm. Jail, drugs, shit like that mm-hmm. all came with the territory. Even my fucking dreams and nightmares were... About, you know, like, I would, like, be in fights in my dreams, too. And everything was around that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every day. So it's like, here, it's like what we're doing. Now, everything I do, it's around this. Right. I meet people that's, I meet more vendors. Like, I, that Hype Night thing, Global Goods did, mm-hmm. helped us. I'm not going to wow. lie. As soon as he did, I, and I wasn't even, I'm like, dude, what am I doing in here? I thought it was just, you know, whatever, okay, Hype Night, or, you know, the culture, what have you. I go in there, I feel like I felt like I, I stood out like a thumb. I'm like, dude, what the fuck am I like doing? You didn't here? belong. I didn't belong there. Yeah. Cause everybody else, <clears throat> shout out to Carlos Wave Check, you know, Cheese Wave Check. Mm-hmm. Um and the other boys there, everybody else is just doing their thing. Like they they had their own they all did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. They were, you know, more like thrift, uh, vintage, things like that nature. Mm-hmm. And I'm here like with my sneakers and fucking my own clothing line. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? And like little do you know, boom, when it started cracking, Curtis came in and and we all just start people just and that's that's what from that night on that's what really pushed me right now like i'm mm-hmm. just heavy on that now and like because i never seen besides my bros my friends and you guys and everybody like that supported me but and i love that and i appreciate that but i've always said like i can't just keep selling to my friends yeah because i will not get anywhere to be honest mm-hmm. yeah i love y'all but it's not getting me anywhere i need to get strangers people that you know yeah. i don't even know and when that night happened we sold out. I sold out all my shit, all my merch. Oh, wow. And uh, it just fucking, it was just like a blessing. You know, people I didn't even know fuck with us and bought our shit. From there on, like, boom, I met Carlos and them. Now we're working together and then this and that. And then I met my homie Super. You know, he's doing his uh, movement as well with s and And, like, everything's just kind of, like, in a, in the same realm. And we're all just kind of working together. And, wow. Yeah. Yeah, because honestly... To whoever is going through the rock bottom, I guess, and this is for you too, Felicia. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Better things are coming, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I feel like I do know you know that. Yeah. Even though you might not believe it right now. Yeah, I think that's what I like. I know. Yeah. You just can't control your feelings and your thoughts. I can't control. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like I'm human at the end of the day. Yeah. But then you just like, Back to you know what I mean? Because like, like one day, it's like yeah, yeah. Honestly, like that one day, you just kind of realize like, all right, that's enough, you know? Like I've it's exactly it. what I've, the fucking was. I basically it. like been depressed for like this amount of time. Like I'm, it's time to fucking do something, you know? Right. And don't feel bad too. Like if you're going through something like really deep, like sometimes you just gotta take that shit. Like feel whatever you gotta feel. Yeah, um, happen. Soak that in and uh. <laughs> Don't let it stick, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. You got to make a choice because it's only... And, it, and it's like, especially when you don't have... I can't say you don't have a support system because I chose to isolate myself. And that's the only way I knew that it worked for me. 
Yeah. When you fucking break down, mm-hmm. when you by yourself and shit at home or whatever to make the case may be, and you just done something that just never you were never thought or done before, and like you just, I just fucking broke down. It just fucking like I didn't think about it. I didn't watch any movies or sad love fucking mm-hmm. movies. Yeah. I just so, broke the fuck down. Yeah. Honestly, I got. I remember that moment too, where I just I got home one day. I was in the middle of that, like, obviously, you know, going through stuff. I got home one day, laid down, dude, and I just started crying. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know where that shit came from, I'm dude. Dying, yeah. Like, all of a sudden, I just felt all that emotion fucking release, dude. I was just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I was just like, I'm here crying. Good thing nobody's <laughs> around me. Nobody's watching me. I wasn't watching anything. Yeah. I wasn't listening to anything. I just laid down there and started bawling, dude. I was just like, ah. I'm not like a religious person. I don't know if you guys are, but more spiritual, I yeah, guess. Spiritual. Yeah, that, I think that's what it is. Because I, I, I always say, you know, what I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, especially man-made. Like, oh, you're gonna do this, or you should do this, or else this is gonna happen to you. Well, who says? You said it. No, fuck yeah. it. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, for me, it's more like my relationship with God, whoever God is. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe in. And when I fucking broke down, I just gave myself. I'm like, dude, I know it sounds kind of weird right now, but. No. So, I just kind of. Honestly, on, I was I, the same way, too. I was like, bro, I have no fucking <laughs> idea what I'm doing right now. Fucking Help drive me. this fucking shit. <laughs> like, take me somewhere. Take the I'm just like, oh my God. Honestly, because like, I always like to control everything, you know? Same, yeah, I, yeah. I'm that type of guy. I, I used to be. Um, but once I just fucking broke down and I was just like, fuck, I'm all sorts of fucked up in the head. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And this was in the, in the middle of, oh, I'm making it. I'm not working for the people anymore, you know? <laughs> um, outside, people yeah, looking yeah. in, I'm like, oh, Revolt. man, this guy's just taking pictures of naked girls yeah. and like doing all this <laughs> crazy shit. Yeah. I, I was just asking in my head, why don't you bring me, Jerry? All those photos, like <laughs> because I know that's how you. He's trying to blow them. I know. I don't. I don't want you to blow any of the models' backs, bro. Jesus. Um, that is not my guilty pleasure. I was just kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah, once I just let go, and I'm just like, "Fuck, I'm fucked up. Take over, Jesus. Take the wheel." Man, we all. I think we all. It's, it's such a common thread. I keep saying we all go through the same shit. Yeah. And from then on, I started praying like. Every morning, I'm dead ass wow. till today. I pray really? every morning. You could say, "Oh, it's you." It's not. No, I. It's me. But this is like a, a, again spirituality and it makes energy. your life easier. Honestly, if you mm-hmm. think if you think about like somebody's guiding you and shit started yeah. going yeah the right way. I my relation, my family, we're more close. I'm more open with them. Um, uh, my me, wow. and my mom, like we we ain't trust me, we ain't your typical mother and your son. Like we were like, you know. Not to bash anything. I love my mother to death. You know what I mean? But it wasn't like... A, she wasn't your typical mother. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not to go off subject, and, but I digress. But like now, we're relationship, our relationship's a lot better. Um, I talk to her, you know, all the time. And, you know, I, she's the one I open up to. And like, matter of fact, I just got her a coach person. You know, something light. I'm not doing... Uh, not LB, okay. but yeah. Nice. Aww, but we're really like, we open up to each other like a lot. We're like, we're super close now. Like me and my friends yeah. now. I'm closer to my mom now too now yeah. that I'm like slowly starting to open up. Yeah. Um, and it feels good. Yeah. Um, wow. But yeah, let's wrap this up since we talked for a little bit. Um, yeah. Any final words, Felicia? If you're going through it, it's going to be okay. <laughs> because <laughs> it's like the toxic positivity, <laughs> you know. Yeah, oh, everything's gonna be fine. No, but I mean, if you're going through it, it's just like honestly, I'm I'm trying to accept that I'm going through it, but I'm also trying to trying think, to get out of it. Trying to get out of it at the same time. So you know, it happens. Yeah. You can't control it. You don't know when nope. it's gonna happen. You know, because like I said, the turning point was when I was like legit that day, just being like. I know this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm like, life is right right now. And then literally like. The universe is like, like, no. Yeah, it's like moments after that. It was like, bam. Dude. But, but the thing is like, it's one of those moments that you think it's bad now when you look back at it. But mm-hmm. once you get to that point and we're like, oh yeah, like I needed that. You Trust know? me. My emotion is like a fucking roller coaster. Yeah. 
That's why I had to stay away from everybody because I didn't want my, you know, I was just, yeah. oh my God, I'll be up you and know, I'll be low. You know what I think it might be? Because I, I was trying to analyze like, the situation, but I think a little bit too is like, cause even though I felt good in that moment, I still think there was a lot of unresolved things happening. Yeah. So I feel like oh, it's almost like those have to surface to get fixed or healed before I can be back to that point. So I'm whole. Does that make sense? Yeah, because it's always it's always deeper than what you really think, you know? Yeah. When you snap on people, mm-hmm. it's not because they did something wrong. It's because you have already so many things going on in your head and that was just a trigger that yeah. you know, that got you to snap. There's all I feel like it's always deeper than that. Cause um it's crazy because like today I just recently had like a very serious conversation Mm -hmm. with the person that I needed to have that conversation with Mm. which is um, that's why I'm feeling like really light right now so it's like hopefully my energy is kind of like because I I know you guys are like really tired right now but um, (laughs) yeah like I had a recent conversation just today is it with who I think it is yes okay (laughs) Um, and it was uh, because I've been holding back on the things that I wanted to say because yeah. I was scared of how they would react, you know? Right. But then today I was just say you know what? I was just like, it needed to go out because I think that's why I was going through what I was going through last week because mm. I wanted to have that conversation. I've been, I've been having, wanting to have that conversation for a long time. But today was just a day that it, it happened and it made me so feel so much better. I feel like we're so much closer now too. On like at least we're like understanding on where we're at Mm -hmm. or how we're actually like feeling and thinking, right? Which is good because like I don't know if you and your sister need to talk deeper Mm -hmm. or whatever you know whatever you're going through. I don't know. Um, Leave no stones unturned. Got it. Yeah. Once you actually have that conversation, on just express what you need to express. You know. Right. And it's not even for. For them to change your mind, it's for you to actually just like, I just want you to hear me out. I don't need you to answer or, you know, to respond. Right. Sometimes you just want to like, hey, this is what I'm feeling. And yeah. And as long as that person just lets you kind of and not deflect, you know. Um, well, it's, yeah. like, it's like what you said, though. I mean, if you clearly know that, mm-hmm. that's obviously important. Right. I mean, it's not like I'm not going to absolve a fucking everybody or a person what have you but it's like it's also okay to um fill in that void so to speak and do what you gotta do to get it you know solved you know even if it's a, just a talk it out things mm-hmm. like or else you're gonna just move and feel like there's something there that you haven't right you know resolved, resolved. Or what have you, you know, but it takes a problems. really big level of like self-awareness to even realize that it's because of something deeper you know right um but yeah, how about you, Johnny? You got any final message to yeah. the viewer? Just to kind of piggyback off what Felicia said. It's um, you know, you gotta, you can't go around it. You can't like try to get out of it. The situation when you're going through, you go through. You just gotta go through it head on. Yeah, honestly, it's a pretty good conversation, man. I mean, yeah. like we started off really rocky, yeah. <laughs> as we normally do. Hopefully, hopefully, people <laughs> actually. Listen to like the rest of it, the rest of it, <laughs> because like you know, the last the just, first 10 minutes was kind of a nonsense. Like just start at 10 just minutes, edit. Yeah, yeah. Just, no, no fuck no? that. No. Okay, fuck. No. yeah, all right. Well, at least edit. warn them, get through these first 10 minutes. Trust me, <laughs> yeah, like, like a, 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 a disclaimer. Yeah. Let me get in, but like, trust just me. get rid of it. I know it's rough the first, but you know moments. what? That's that's part of it, you know, because like we're only human, man. Like. Part of yeah, the we do. Podcast. I feel like we're we're very intuitive and we're very insightful, but then we also have tendencies to say dumb shit, and then that's okay. That's what makes us human. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you guys having me here. Yeah, thanks thank for coming, you. man. Yeah, we just want to thank you for coming to the podcast. I know. I think you, when I first started the podcast, you're like, dude, let me be on the podcast, and then when you got I here, we're like, gonna talk about like sneakers and. Clothes and uh, you don't want to talk to sneakers with me. You need Anthony in this seat. <laughs> yeah, talk about I don't. Sneakers. I don't know why you think I would have like, any anything to right say now? when it comes to those uh, because I mean, I'm not a sneaker. Yeah, I'm not. I just figured because we're on a kind of same realm again. 
No, you and Anthony are, no. not me. I mean, we're all creatives for sure, yeah, yeah. but yeah. I'm not I'm not as deep into yeah, streetwear I'm not, like you yeah, and Anthony. I'm not are. in that. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I would embarrass him. Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know shit. But I wanna. Like, That's not my wife. I do want to take. I do. I do want to take this time to uh, thank Johnny for coming to the podcast, and yeah. also he actually hooked me up hey. with a. Uh, he actually gave me the sheets for my oh, yeah. birthday. Um, That's right. You know, I'm the. I think of all those are your nice J's. Shoes. Of all the J's, what do you have? Like three pairs? Because yeah, Jerick is not a sneaker culture. You know, vulture or whatever yeah. type of guy, <laughs> what have you? Um, yeah, I gave you all those J's, I think, huh? Or did you have any other ones? Before did you that? have well? It was the gray never, ones. Yeah, I've never had Jordans. Flying it, the shadows. Yeah, the gold one. Is the, the gold, gold ones. The metallic gold yeah. mids. And That's now you got nice. the lows. I gave you highs, mids, and lows. Just um, yeah, I remember <laughs> so you gave me sneakers. the, you gave me the fly knit like two years ago. Yeah. And then. What's the Jordan highs? Yeah, and then the two years later. Here's another one. Yeah. I bought the other one. Oh, yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. give me that. Thanks for the support. <laughs> I support my homies, you know? Jarek <laughs> used his pendulum to see if he could buy shoes. I did. His pendulum said yes. But I gave you for a good deal. Yeah. I think it's okay. I do want to talk about the pendulums. That might be a little, like, woo-woo to other people. Yeah. But um, I use it. Yeah. it's uh, That's a definitely... I use uh, it for my new job. That's definitely... A, <laughs> uh, if, you're the, if you believe in that, it's crazy, you know? Um... It's mind blowing, I guess, um, but that's definitely a different. Because that's so, it's just a fucking rabbit hole that you gotta yeah. get into. Um, oh man, one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like if you're if you're not fully there, you would think that we're crazy. Yeah. The way I understand. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways, I think is that it. Is it? That was fire. I mean, I didn't know why I was getting myself into that. I appreciate that actually. You got a little snippets of our. Yeah. Not so glamorous lives. <laughs> yeah. Um, Snippets. That's all you get. Just a you tip. You getting it Just a more. tip, you know. Yeah. Ain't nobody. No, ain't nobody. I don't want to incriminate myself. <laughs> ain't nobody need to hear the rest. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's it. See you guys on next week's episode of Yo, Yo Check, check it. Out. Okay. <laughs> Should I learn this so we could do oh. it? Or? Well, that's not no. our normal. Well, the do the oh, the do guests do don't do it. Do gotcha. Do okay. Do Love y'all. Oh, you don't have it saved ever. Every time. Peace. Peace. All right. Say it. Peace. Oh, I thought that was the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Master Peace. Yeah, there you go. I finally got the name right. Hey. Jeez.